Scientism. Science has proven this thing. No, it has not. Science versus Scientism. Science is an open-ended exploration of reality based on logical thinking about empirical observations. Scientism is the adherence to a physicalist version of reality that confines investigation to those sorts of things that are permitted by physicalism. Professor Imans Barus Physicalism is a more modern, more complete term for what materialism was once used to describe. Scientism from Collins English Dictionary 1. The application of or belief in the scientific method. 2. The uncritical application of scientific or quasi-scientific methods to inappropriate fields of study or investigation. Number 2 is the problem child. Genuine science can become quasi-scientific when it's based upon false assumptions. Physicalism from the American Heritage Dictionary The doctrine that all that exists is ultimately physical. From Webster's College Dictionary A doctrine associated with logical positivism and holding that every meaningful statement, other than the necessary statements of logic and mathematics, must refer directly or indirectly to observable properties of spatio-temporal things or events. The physically observable properties of the present world are all that exists, is an idea that exists, yet is not an observable property, nor a spatio-temporal thing. Making the idea into a sentence in order to record it or communicate it, such as by speaking it, writing it, or forming a pattern in your neurons, may result in a physically observable property. However, if so, said property depends upon the idea itself, which is a not an observable property. Therefore, the idea is false. Science or fiction. To confine investigation within false boundaries is not an act of science, it is dogmatic fiction. This may seem simple, however fiction can have a specific purpose, which brings us to another word. Propaganda from the American Heritage Dictionary. 1. The systematic propagation of a doctrinal cause or of information reflecting the views and interests of those advocating such a doctrinal cause. 2. Material disseminated by the advocates or opponents of a doctrinal cause. If someone was motivated to pass off quasi-science as genuine science, the result would be propaganda. What physics can tell us. If our current theories are reasonably accurate, a proton has a half-life of between 10 to the 34 and 10 to the 37 years, meaning that in that time half of all existing protons will have decayed. There is much circumstantial evidence that our current theories are inadequate and that such a predicted half-life is much longer than the reality. Also, if it is possible that leptons can change into quarks and or quarks into leptons, all bits are off. Decays will happen much more frequently. You don't even need to understand these technical terms. The bottom line is that even something as basic as a proton will not last forever, so no physical thing will last forever. Yet we exist. Nothing from nothing. 
If at any stage absolutely nothing ever existed, then absolutely nothing would continue to exist indefinitely. The term absolutely nothing means exactly and only that, definitely not meaning an inexplicable mess of possibilities or whatever other assorted factors have been devised by propagandists avoiding this obvious stumbling block in the desired pathway to physicalism. Since physical things, including your body, clearly do exist, it is necessary that something non-physical has always existed, and that it is able to make other things, including physical things. If the non-physical thing depended upon another thing or things, then it or they also always existed, and William of Ockham, which was then a town in Surrey, some time ago put a razor through that idea. Ernst Mark, and quite a few others who each had significant impact on scientific progress, also specifically decried unnecessarily complex theories. Beyond necessary. Thus far, the conclusions have been necessary. Each follows from observation, each with no reasonable alternative. They are not dependent upon experimentation or fixed conditions. Some of those conclusions have very profound consequences. Examining those consequences could be fascinating, however, time and space does not allow that as a reasonable option here. As minions of some control freaks are busy destabilizing things to disrupt, destroy, normal in every known nation, making us all more desperate for normal and thus easier to control, it seems opportune to question a few specific aspects of normal and see where that takes us. Complexity the simplest known living cell is more complex than all of Los Angeles. Your body is comprised of approximately 30 to 40 trillion not-so-simple cells. The most common by far being red blood cells. Many are part of several layers of various interlocked networks. To think that you came together accidentally, no matter how long it took, is pretty close to the ultimate act of hubris. The self-made man really is a non-event. A near second hubristic attitude is to presume that you can and do understand the thinking of an entity who devised such intricate webs of interdependence as those we see about us, without any prototypes or precursors. Accidentalism. This is to believe that accidentalism rules the universe, that everything we experience is accidental or coincidental and always has been, and it really goes beyond that to a form of arrogance. In essence, you'd be adoring the Roman idol Fortuna, descended from the Greek idol Tyche, who was often pictured standing on a large ball as a symbol of instability or unpredictability, the opposite of the generally stable, consistent systems necessary for life. The bottom line is that we do not understand, are not even capable of understanding, how the not-physical, non-made one thinks, so any modelling we will do will yield, at best, very approximate outcomes. Communication. Nevertheless, without a totally comprehensive understanding, let's work with what we have and let's posit that the necessary, non-physical thing decided to communicate with the things that it made, in a way which identified it. How would it do that? One possible answer is that it would make the communication available using methods sensible to the recipients, yet not replicable by them. In shorter words, they could sense it, 
yet could not make it themselves. A suitable method would be to accurately predict specific and significant events well before they could possibly be predicted by extrapolating from then current circumstances. Timeless Identity This method would identify the originator to be not bound by time, as we made things all are, so the communication could not be from a made thing. Has this been done? Yes, several times. One stream of prediction was read by Alexander the Great as he conquered Judea. At the time he had asked for ancient written material, and his tutor had ensured that he was fluent in the major languages he was likely to encounter. Alexander was perplexed to read of his own forces being symbolically described in writing then more than two centuries old. Post-Alexander When Alexander died at only 32 years of age, his empire was split between his subordinate leaders, exactly as predicted. These were conquered by another empire, Rome. The predictions include a later resurgence of the Macedonian Empire when this empire split, and some elements of that split empire, finally shattered into ten parts, as predicted, continued and exert significant world control today. And that's despite a significant and predicted to the very year hit being taken by it a couple of centuries ago. That empire hasn't finished its role in world history, and is predicted to be pivotal about now. Many political forces, whether officially political or not, in the world now, are heavily influenced, some are directly controlled by, that empire. As to many, possibly most empires, it claims significant moral authority. As is also usually the case, the claims aren't legitimate. It is corporately interested in power, for its own sake. Power is renowned for corrupting, it seeks absolute power. An end may yet be said to justify the means, yet there is nothing at all to justify the end in question. This has been shown, and now... The most powerful made being long ago became self-righteous and rebelled against the non-made being, claiming the same status and abilities. The rebel and subordinates have since taken charge, sometimes indirectly, of most, if not all, of the significant political forces. The details far exceed the space and time available in this document. However, matters are being brought to a final conclusion as you are reading this. The big question we each face is, where does my loyalty rest? If it rests in an unmade being, you will be attacked by the subordinates of the rebel. Yet you do also have a real future. Your loyalty steadily changes your character, so it makes you increasingly worth conserving. If it rests with the rebel, as the rebellion fails, you will be taken down with them, permanently. You will also, at that time, acknowledge it as a just action. Records. One hint about the, how the non-made one considers things may be found in them having guided a group of people who decided to not rebel, including having them record events and concepts not perceptible or comprehensible to people in those circumstances. This further validates the predictions in that the information recorded is clearly beyond the natural scope of the people recording it, and that they have no clear motivation for recording any of it other than direction from the not-made one.
to one of those non-rebellious groups who had begun to fall prey to propaganda from rebellious groups, however were at that point prepared to return their trust to the non-made one once again, was said, this is translated, I am, name, I change not, so you sons of patriarch's name are not ended. This reveals a form of stability not otherwise available to us a day today. Another validation is that some of the predictions are symbolic, so unless an unduly bright person like Alexander were taking the information aboard, the predictive association would not be perceived. One consequence was that groups of people described in the predictions in unflattering ways would not set out to destroy all record of the predictions. Over the last couple of millennia, some of the predicted groups so involved did set out to make the entire set of records inaccessible to others who weren't under their control. The information was only publicly available when it had been interpreted by people who were under their control and who also had a vested interest in making the group in question seem as benign as possible. The next step. The next step for you is get the rest of the story. This information is not hidden in Gnostic or occult style, it has been submerged in ongoing propaganda that falsely portrays it as mythical or unreliable. It follows that you are seeking ancient material that has accurately predicted historical events across millennia, or rather, accurate translation of said writing into a language that you can understand. Reliability. Copies of the source text from the second phase of documentation amount to many thousands, written down less than two centuries after the events they record. The reliability of these texts is supported by many other texts, different in purpose, unrelated and by other often opposed authors, using the same names of people and places and same timings. No other set of ancient texts even approaches that level of independent support. Texts from the first phase of documentation make statements which are well beyond the information available to desert nomads supposedly inventing them. Examples include Star Orion as visually stationary, the Pleiades star cluster as mobile, Earth not mounted on a substantial thing, undersea valleys, suboceanic springs, that is for fresh water, basic hydrology, entropy, a long list. The Sustonian Institution said this about the texts. Are as accurate historical documents as any that are, we have from antiquity, and are in fact more accurate than many of the Egyptian, Mesopotamian, or Greek histories. National Geographic Society stated this A valuable reference tool and use it many times for geographical relationships, old names, and relative chronologies. Reporting on using these texts, archaeologist Elad Mazar stated, Very often we see that it is very accurate and sometimes amazingly accurate. The text discovered in the char, that is two millennia old, excavated from the remains of a burning building, Ain Gedi scroll, is 100% identical to the version of one of the texts that has been in use for centuries, said scholar Emmanuel Tov. How accurately do you assess? If a person or group making a statement about a thing has an interest in how others may respond, any statement will very likely be biased. Truth is not determined by majority or by agreement. Your own idea of normal is not universal. 
An expert knows more and more about less and less until they know almost everything about almost nothing, so their opinion may no longer be useful. Validating what you find. If the text makes no significant claims, it is pointless, so you can safely ignore it. If the text makes claims which have not come to pass, it is false, so ignore it. If the text has not raised serious political opposition, it isn't related to real-life major events, so ignore it. If the text does not step beyond the physical, that author was capped by a physicalist glass ceiling on their thoughts, so ignore it. Start now.